everybody, my name is Sam Lutka and I'm the Interpretive Naturalist at the Adirondack Interpretive Center this summer 2020 season. Welcome to the second installment of our Newcomb Naturalist Note series. Today, we will continue to investigate the American beaver, New York State's official mammal. Did you know that beavers are second only to humans in their ability to alter their natural environment? Let's take a closer look at the Castor Canadensis and the environments that they create. Beavers are not very agile on land and need a way to safely access food. They have an ingenious way of accomplishing that. Beavers are builders. They are famous for the large dams that they can create using trunks, branches, twigs, plants, mud, and rocks. Dams are usually C-shaped structures and can be as tall as 10 feet. At the AIC, you can see the remains of a beaver dam under one of the bridges on the Sucker Brook Trail and an older dam just upstream. Beavers build dams to raise the water level in an area so that they can safely get to food resources, as well as to surround their lodge with a protective moat and, in northern climates like the Adirondacks, create deep water food storage for winter. By damming streams and rivers, beavers create new ponds and wetland environments that promote biodiversity and the growth of aquatic plants. These wetlands can help reduce the potential for flooding downstream, slow erosion, and help purify the water. Potential harmful effects of dams include destroying the habitat of other species, the buildup of organic material, and the damage to human structures and roads, which cost between $75 to $100 million annually in the United States alone. In New York, it is illegal to tear down a beaver dam without a permit from the Department of Environmental Conservation. Fun fact, the largest beaver dam in existence is in Wood Buffalo National Park, located in Canada, and can be seen from outer space. Another construction project for the beaver is its home, and the lodge is the center point of beaver life. This is where they spend most of the day and all of the winter, give birth in the spring, and retreat to when they feel threatened. They are built along the edges of lakes and ponds or are freestanding surrounded by water. The lodge is made from peeled sticks and branches and then covered in mud and stones, helping it to stay cool during the summer and above freezing in winter. Some Adirondack lodge structures are 28 to 35 feet in width, 6 to 7 feet tall, and several decades old. Beavers will have multiple lodges within their territory and move back and forth between them. Beavers are considered a keystone species, which is a species that other species and ecosystems depend on. It is estimated that 50% of threatened or endangered species rely on beaver wetlands for survival. Anywhere the beaver lives, it creates flooded areas and deeper water. Beaver ponds and marshes provide habitat for aquatic plants, otters, mink, moose, ducks, herons and other birds, dragonflies and other insects, as well as a variety of fish species. Even after beavers abandon their ponds and dams, the area may transition into a grassy meadow, followed by low shrubs, before reverting back to its original habitat type. Each habitat in this progression is supporting a rich diversity of life. The North American beaver is a fascinating mammal with a variety of physical adaptations and behaviors that make the mammal unique. No other mammal manipulates its environment to the extent that a beaver does. The pond, lake, and wetland habitats that are created by beavers' proclivity for building and the habitats that develop after these sites are abandoned promote biodiversity and provide habitat for vulnerable species in the Adirondacks. Thank you for watching our second installment of the Newcomb Naturalist Notes series. In our next program, we will see how humans manipulate their natural environment when we discuss the logging history in the Rich Lake area. See you then!